Okay, for individuals who will be tuning in later, your final is on Thursday, December 21st from 12.50 to 2 o'clock. I think that's what we said earlier. I mean, a lot of these uh, signs are posted. So what will probably cause uh, problems is going to the correct class on Thursday because tomorrow is pretty straightforward. You go to first hour, then to second hour, then to fourth hour, then to seventh, and then seventh hour is tomorrow afternoon. Okay, then I would be led to believe that on Thursday, then you go to third hour right away, then to sixth hour, then to fourth hour, and then again you're right after dinner between the hour, the time of 12:50 to 2 o'clock. It's an hour and 10 minutes you get. Okay. I think there's just one slight correction that uh, uh, we need to make. I put the wrong number over here. And what that means is I put a 10 here. I think it should have said number 9. It's where you had those terms uh, heterozygous, homozygous, true breeding. Uh, those are some of the vocab terms that sticks out in, in my mind. Okay. Okay. Other questions that you had asked earlier was what? Okay. So here they are. Okay. So in case you can't read it, listen to it, then hit pause if you're tuning in later. Okay. It says in Star Wars. Okay. If you are hearing James Earl Jones, you are viewing this character. So to put that in context, you could say in Toy Story, if you are hearing Tim Allen, you are viewing which character? Buzz, okay? Otherwise, if it was Toy Story and you are listening to Tom Hanks, then you're viewing Woody, okay? So that's what that means. In the 1980s, Mr. Mister was uh, a group name that, and that artist is on my playlist. I think it's uh, called Kyrie is the name of the song. So it's just, uh, uh, if you ever watch the show Home Improvement, Tim's neighbor is called Wilson Wilson. So it's just a name of a band that has the same name repeated. So in this case, uh, another song that's on my playlist, it's uh, Hungry Like the Wolf. It's another band that has a repeat name. It's not Mr. Mr., but the same name is posted twice. So that's what that one means. Then looks like you need to go down a little bit. Okay, then the third one. The, uh, another class had requested a Christmas question. So what's the real life name? In other words, what we mean is if we were asking for the name of Buzz or Woody, that wouldn't be the answer. You want the real life name Tim Allen or Tom Hanks. So in this case, sorry? The actor's name. Yes. So what is the real life name or the actor's name of the character that gives Kevin's mom a ride home to Chicago in the movie Home Alone? The same actor was also in Uncle Buck. Same with Macaulay Culkin, was in both Home Alone and Uncle Buck. So the answer to this, okay, was also in Home Alone and Uncle Buck. So the real life name of the actor. So I'll just go ahead and hit pause now. You don't need to listen to the silence. Okay, so you may have to come back and get um, this, these questions. But again, now I'm just going to go ahead and hit erase. For those of you tuning in later, you are relying on your friends that are and classmates that are back here. So we'll be right with you. Okay, so as you can see, this is erased now. With the rest of this, is there anything that you feel worthy or 
that's necessary to go over. Um, let's do some protein synthesis real on cue. I see. I got that. But why don't you just say real quick? Could that be something that will pertain to some of you in the future, right? Your ACT test. Yes, or you might act, okay? So if this is one part of a DNA molecule, what would be its corresponding structures on the bottom? Okay, so then what happens is if we were going to replicate this on the outside, okay, so this is still DNA that's in the middle, what would be on the outside if it's DNA? Okay. It's only, it only turns into when it's RNA. Right. So now, if we're going to send the message from the nucleus out to the ribosome, now on messenger RNA. Okay. So then this goes to the ribosome. We've got U. Oops, no, nope, the other way, because this one was first, okay? So we got A, G, and then U, okay? So then what happens is this codon will code for something very specific on transfer RNA. Remember, this was messenger RNA. Then transfer RNA comes in here and physically picks up something. Those, that's what they're called, but doesn't say what they pick up, though. What is, it? What is thyroxine, calcitonin, parathyroid hormones are really long units of what? Well, that's what they do. What's their composition? Which one of those? Are those steroid hormones, polypeptide hormones, or amino acid hormones? Amino acid, amino acid hormones. Okay? So what that means is transfer RNA physically picks up an amino acid to line up with what the message is trying to tell it. This is the code that will line up for the specific amino acids over here. So then this is the codon. Don't read the table and say this is the letters that you use. That is incorrect. So what are these three letters now? Nope. Okay. So then what would happen is you have all these letters. You do, this is your first letter that you do. Then you go across the top. That's the second letter. Then down here is your third letter. Okay? Do we remember that? Yeah. Okay? One of the things I would like to think and or say is, for instance, how many, how many basketball games are you going to win if you miss eight layups? You know, depends on how bad your team is. Okay, the other team is... is uh, uh, pretty decent to really good. Probably Okay. What about if you can't get your serving percentage up? You keep hitting them long or into the net. Then you're probably not going to do very well. My point is, you've, whether it's sports or whether it's practice time for uh, all-state band, all-state chorus, or anything of that nature, got to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. To me, this, by this time, 
this really should not be that difficult. Yeah, I know we spent a little time on it. That is true. But I would like to think that this is easy points, just like layups, just like serving the ball, just like putting your time into rehearsing your lines. I mean, just think of how far you've come in one act play with where you're at now to when you first started with rehearsing your lines. Okay? Take advantage of those opportunities. Okay, so that is in essence protein synthesis because you're taking the directions that DNA has. If it's not replication, you're taking the message in the form of messenger RNA and the transfer RNA physically picks up the amino acids according to the codons and these are your anti-codons. Anything else? Okay. Yes. I mean, it's been a while since we've done this protein synthesis. Didn't haven't we done respiration already? We have. We have not. Have have not. Okay. Okay. So. That glucose gets broke down in a specific process and it's called glycolysis. Okay, you're not making that up. Why did you know that? Because you're right. Okay, couldn't find it? No, I just wanted to go over it again. Oh, okay. So then in this process of glycolysis, Two things have to happen when you get down to this stage, okay? Okay, that's one thing we need is, okay, and you also have to have this acetyl coenzyme A, that's right, okay? So in this entire process, how many total, that's a trick question. How many total ATP do you get from this? But then for this process to take place, it takes two of those. So then here is your magic number for glycolysis. Then should you have everything fall in line that this, all these biochemical reactions can take place? Okay, the magic number in here. Okay, then when we look at this, okay, then our total number is, you know, I'm going to look, and I'm going to make darn sure that that's right, so hang on. Okay, I'm glad that we looked because on this September 19th, okay, it's got this and then our magic number. I was thinking that wasn't right. That's why I thought we better double check that. Okay? Yes? Right, is what we call oxygen debt because if you're running low on this, okay? You still, this process might halt, but you still produce energy. It's just not very efficient. And then when it's not very efficient, that's why you get really, really sore. Because at the end of this, your end product, we said, starts with that. Pyruvic acid. And then... Anaerobically, this, this pyruvic acid can be converted to lactic acid. And when that happens, that is where you can get two ATP, not additional ones. It means that this has halted, it can't go into here, and then this is specifically what's happened. That's why these numbers have to match. That would be around 400 meters of protein. Could be. And then that's why you're 
standing. You're trying to catch your breath because, well, we hope not. Where does oxygen have to go? There's, they have to send oxygen to your brain. Your heart. Your diaphragm. Okay? Those are three areas you have to have oxygen. This, you can go without. It's just not as efficient. Eventually, you will have enough oxygen because your body becomes conditioned to that. So the threshold for this begins to not increase, it begins to decrease the amount of oxygen that you need because your body becomes more efficient. So that's why you're able to stand the ability of running much longer than what we think your opponent does. I mean, is it still a signal to a coach that I'm gas and I need to come out? Do you, is this still a universal signal that I got to come out or this? What do you do? But if you needed to. I would say how the band is strong, but yeah. Oh. That's okay. Also that does also work. Right. Okay. Glycolysis is always happening. Hmm? It just doesn't work as hard, does it? Correct. Like if you're just sitting down, it doesn't work as hard. But like no. Because you're not using a lot of energy that quickly. Yeah. Okay? It's when the demands go up, like you had mentioned, that this is going to change. Running, for instance. Okay? Anything else? Okay. And one of the things, whether it's sports or whether it's academics, we want you to be two to three steps ahead of everyone else that you meet at the college level as freshmen. We want to say we are already familiar with this. We know how to do this. We're comfortable with this, we're proficient with this, and we can move forward and be successful with it. Okay? It's one of the things, okay, you get out of this what you put into it. So, front row. Second row. Third row. Okay, everyone's nodding their head yes. So that is all we have. That concludes materials for this semester. So when you come back, we begin with evolution. And, uh, and your semester exam again, the 21st at 1250 to 2 o'clock. We'll catch up to you next time.